that work? Okay. You're good? So we can go ahead? Okay. Good afternoon or good evening. It's kind of in between there. Um, appreciate everyone being here tonight. And at this time, would you please stand for the invocation, the pledge, and the call of you would come up, please? Right. <laughs> all right, if you all would bow your heads. Lord, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for each and every person that is here, um, these kids that have worked so hard and are going to be recognized tonight, families, um, teachers that taught these children. I uh, just want to thank um, all of them for their hard work. And Lord, I just commit um, this meeting to you tonight. I want to commit all of our um, schools, our staff members, our principals and assistant principals, all of our teachers, everyone who is just in the trenches um, every day. I just pray that you will continue to bless them and guide them. And Lord, I just thank you for our school board members and our district office members and do the same for them. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. There we are. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. At this time, we call this meeting to order. Roll call of members. We have Ms. Howerton, Mr. Brantley. Mr. Durrance, Ms. Compton Twist, Superintendent Dr. Brenda Longshore, Mr. John McClure, our school board attorney, and Ms. Welburn, our, our board secretary. It is a pleasure to have tonight our character word of the month is self control and is presented by the Kindergarten Learning Center. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Karen Doty, principal of the Kindergarten Learning Center. I'll have Ms. Capuano introduce herself in just a minute. It's really ironic that we were chosen for this month <laughs> because um, part of our school strategic plan, our goal four, is the whole child, and our, our monthly word is self-control. Mm -hmm. So it really is fitting, and obviously we have some students here that we want to bring up in just a minute, but um, Mrs. Capuano is just going to briefly kind of review kind of what we do for our monthly uh, skill and, and our self-control focus. So, Hi, everybody. I am Dina Capuano. I am the guidance resource teacher at the Kindergarten Learning Center. Um, just going to share some background information with all of you about our social emotional learning, which incorporates the self-control that Ms. Jody was referring to. Uh, two summers ago, our curriculum leadership team, along with the reading coach, developed a curriculum that focused on social emotional learning. The goal was to provide teachers with an abundance of resources that would allow them to work on developing the whole child, not just academically, but socially and emotionally as well. And so what they did was they created a bin, a bin that looks like this for every teacher. And when you open it, there's files, and there's a file for every month. Some months have two skills that they work on. Um, but in the bin, when you go to that file, they have trade books that focus on the skill. They have um, little posters to use as a visual. So this would be for self-control. And then they also have a back and front resource page that has scenarios to go over with the students, uh, websites to visit games to do online, questions to ask, things like that. And so every teacher receives one of these, and it's a tool they use to be able to teach those um, skills. Well, this year, at the beginning of this year, we wanted to find a way to celebrate the students who embrace and exhibit these SEL skills being taught. So we decided to combine two things into one. Last year, um, Mrs. Owens, one of our paras, she painted a beautiful tree uh, in one of our hallways in memory of one of our sweet students, Jordan Douglas. Um, the tree is now decorated and will continue to be decorated throughout the sc school year with die cuts. They're like uh, shapes, things, the things that we cut, like apples. Since we're the line cubs, we have uh, paw paws. Um, this month we have spiders. <laughs> and they'll be continued to, uh, so what they do is we put the student's name 
that is exhibiting the skill for the month. So this month of October, kids that are exhibiting self-control, they'll have their name put on a brown spider and it will go up on Jordan's tree. And then they get to see it in the hallway. Um, so it was a nice way to make Jordan's tree active and as well as highlight some of the current students in our school. Um, and so we have a presentation for you today. Um, and you will get a glimpse of Jordan's tree at the end if you, if you keep an eye on, on things at the end there. Um, but we do have a presentation for you today that is um, related to the character word of the month, self-control. Um, we have a fantastic coach at our school, Coach Andino. And with his help, we created a video presentation with some of our kinder kindergarten kids from the KLC um, demonstrating self-control. <laughs> and so we have some of our kiddos here with us. Um, if they would like um, to come up, Akeem and Presley and Miracle. I, oh, and Rowan's here too. Come on up, guys. Go, go over there with Miss Doty. You're going to go over with Miss Doty and you're going to introduce yourselves. <laughs> My name is Rowan Emerson John. My teacher's name is Ms. Powers. Five years old. My name is Presley Hines. My teacher's name is Ms. Quinn, and I'm five years old. My team is Akeem. Ms. Powers, I'm six years old. <laughs> my name is Miracle Blink, and I'm five years old, and my teacher's name is Miss Bass. Awesome. Very good. Okay, we hope you guys enjoy the video. We've enjoyed it. I've probably watched it three times already myself. <laughs> I watched it five times. <laughs> enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> 
So special. <laughs> Good job, everyone. That was another test of self-control. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You brought joy to our board meeting for sure. <laughs> Next, we have the recognition. Can't talk today for the secondary perfect FAS FSA EOC score recipient. I swear I can't talk. I know. Very true. Dr. Campbell. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Campbell, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education. Superintendent Dr. Longshore and board members and esteemed guests, it is my pleasure to recognize the accomplishments of our students. This is what we're here for. So we are always excited about student performance. When students perform good, we're excited. When, it, when they perform great, we're ecstatic. But tonight, we have students who have reached perfection. And as we all know in life, perfection is difficult to come by. So this evening, we've invited family, so I'm glad that you're here, and students and school representatives to really celebrate our students. To start, I will have to do Avon Park Middle School. So this evening, when, before I even begin, I want to say that we have students also that couldn't attend because they're fully vested in their schools, participation of sports and other activities. So I got a few emails <laughs> saying they couldn't attend, but we do feel like we want to read their name here anyway because it's an accomplishment and we will get them their certificate. So starting off with Avon Park Middle School, we have Carlos Tinoco. Are you here this evening? We can still clap. Okay, Carlos, Carlos Tinoco um, received a perfect score on his grade eight science assessment. So next, I will invite Mrs. Remy, principal at Hillgustat Middle School, to call up her students. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. All right, I was going to use my teacher voice. All right, so the first person who received a perfect score 
for the statewide achievement in science is Samantha Cruz. Samantha, are you here? All right, Samantha. Oh, I'm sorry. Congratulations, Samantha. Our next candidate, our winner candidate, sorry about that, winner is Ashley Dean for her perfect score in science, grade eight. All right, Ashley. Congratulations, Ashley. My last perfect score winner for achievement in science grade eight is Rosalind Shuley. Rosalind, are you here? Okay, so to recognize students at Lake Placid Middle School, we have literacy coach, Mrs. Vaughn Merbelt, to um, recognize students. Good evening. Our first student we would like to recognize is Katherine Ashby. Okay, so there's a big Sebring Middle School versus Lake Placid Middle School football game going on tonight. Both are undefeated. So we have a lot of our students that are in attendance, in attendance of that. Um, I know he's one of them. Anthony Ramirez Miller. <laughs> Jaleb Hills, perfect science score. And Jessica Shin, perfect algebra EOC score. Thank you. For Sebring Middle School, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Angie Spencer, Assistant Principal, to call the names of her students. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, our first student we want to recognize, and I'm going to ask you to pause after the first one, is awarded to Kian Labra for a perfect score in English and math. So Kian, if you'll come up. Mm 
The next one is Allison Swing, who received a perfect score on the ELA assessment. Okay, and the next one is Grant Schicknick, who received a perfect score on the Civics EOC, as well as the English Language Arts Assessment. Okay, and our next student is Kylie Labra for a perfect score on her geometry EOC. And the next one is Brock Riley, who received a perfect score on the English Language Arts Assessment. <laughs> and last but not least, Leah Kaler, who received a perfect score on the Statewide Science Assessment. this up a little bit. Okay, so for Sebring High School, I'd like to invite Mr. Donald Ridgeway to the podium to recognize students. He is the assistant principal. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. <laughs> All right, so in, uh, for Sebring High School, for grade 10 English language arts, perfect score. Uh, first one is Catherine Bubb. Our next student is Angela Wong, Wang, and she was perfect score in the grade 10 English language arts assessment as well. The next student who had a perfect score on the grade 10 English language arts assessment, Alyssa Norwaki. Last but not least, in the grade 10 English Language Arts Assessment, Isabel Violet. I'd like to ask Principal for Highlands Virtual, Mrs. Riley, to come to the podium to announce our students. Always a pleasure and the best part of my job is to celebrate and honor our students. So we have three students that we want to celebrate this evening. The first is Carliana Vidal Gonzalez for a perfect score on the Civics EOC.
The next student is Julian Jimenez for a perfect score on the grade eight science assessment. And last but certainly not least is Ocean Swift for achieving a perfect score on the grade eight statewide science assessment. And if we could just give our students one collective round of applause. Fine. Celebrate the moment. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone. Moving on, we have um, the school board member committee reports. Anyone? <coughs> No, we will have, um, I have one petition card here for Jill Tiger on felony suspension. If you would please come up and state your name. And you have five minutes. Hi, good evening. I'm Jill Tiger. Um, so my son, unfortunately, uh, was un fortunate circumstances has been placed on a felony suspension. Um, I don't know, I wrote this whole thing, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. <laughs> okay, I've been reaching out to both um, Avon Park High School where he was attending and the academy where they placed him uh, virtually. Uh, the transition has not been smooth. Um, he is a good student academically. Um, He's a leader, he's very musically inclined with band. Um, we went to his hearing on September 20th at the school. <sighs> My main thing is just, I understand the policy, I don't understand the procedure. Um, it was, I was under the impression that when I was encouraged to appear for his hearing at the school that I would be able to plead my side of the case or to fight for him um, any way possible and that it was in my best interest um, to bring whoever I wanted to attend as um, support. Um, it was stated over and over and over again that this was not to determine guilt or innocence but the adverse impact of the school itself. Um, I just don't understand why we were dragged, my husband and I, um, not dragged, but we went thinking that our presence was going to make maybe a difference and have them see um, our point of view. Um, and it was told to us over and over again that they had to base it off the charges alone. Why we had to be called off of work, why we had to miss things, why it had to be kind of a slap in the face um, when the procedure um, really doesn't involve 
the parents. It's just about the administration at the school. Um, the alternative education um, is not appropriate for my son. I mean, he's basically being set up for failure. He is, does not learn well in virtual. Um, he is, sorry, I don't like speaking in front of people. <laughs> um, so the contact was Mr. Leesburg for um, his alternative education. And he basically told me that it was the academy or nothing, that he had no other information on other alternatives um, because he's new to the area. So anyway, my questions are, um, what's the purpose of a family going to these hearings if our voices aren't heard and it doesn't matter? Um, why is the only educational option for alternative is the academy? And why does the school's reputation matter more than a student's education? And then I found out today, who was never told, this has been three weeks and, and going, that he's not allowed on any school campus. I mean, I just need some clarification on that because nobody's answering my emails anymore. So, um, and I also was told that Melissa Blackman would be attending all of his hearings. She was not at the last one. Um, and I just, I need answers and need to know who I need to talk to instead of getting passed around. So that's it. It's basically what I need to know. Can we have someone contact you tomorrow? Um, well, I do work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do they, so. so um, I mean, I do work for the school board. Oh, okay. I can be contacted through email. Okay. Yeah, I'll be glad to look into it and uh, reach out to you tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wilburn, was that the only petition card? That's yes. the only one I received. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on, we will have the superintendent's report. Dr. Longshore. Thank you. First of all, I'd just like to thank Ms. Doty and those kindergarten children. They showed a lot of self-control just sitting on that little bit. That was pretty brave to be able to put them there. They did an outstanding job. I'm not sure I could sit five minutes without my hand going into that M&M jar. They did great. And for all of our students with their perfect scores, uh, what an accomplishment. And it was wonderful just having students in the boardroom again. So, so thankful for that. Uh, today is actually World Teachers Day, and that's a United Nations Observance Day held annually on October 5th. This year's theme is Teachers at the Heart of Education Recovery, and I certainly think we're in the throes of that. Our teachers are certainly experiencing trying to recover uh, after the pandemic or through the pandemic. Uh, we celebrate our Highlands County teachers just recognizing their <coughs> tremendous work and their dedication to their students. So I uh, thank a teacher today. Today is their day of observance. Also, October is National School Principals Month, and we have a few principals here today. So thank you guys for being here. Each October, National Principals Month recognizes the essential role that principals play in making a school great. Uh, I just want to thank our principals for their very calm resolve through uh, and steady leadership through much turmoil, especially through this last year and a half, and the challenges and obstacles that they have overcome. Uh, we just appreciate their dedication. <laughs> uh, and much less encouraging as that is I would like to request to pull 12C, consider approval of agreement between SBHC and Carnegie Learning. That's 12C. <clears throat> And remind everyone that we will have an executive session following tonight's meeting and would like to request one for our next board meeting as well. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Moving on, um, we have I'm looking for um, a motion to adopt the agenda as revised. Second. <clears throat> Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. Howerton and a second by Mr. Brantley. Is there any public comment with that? Back to the board. Any comments? We'll do roll call. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. 
Mr. Durrance? Yes. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Move no number nine, a motion to approve consent agenda as presented. Make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. Compton Twist and a second by Mr. Durrance. Is there any public comment? Back to the board. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. Mr. Durrance? Yes. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. 10A is consider approval of superintendent's recommendation for personnel. Move approval. <coughs> second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. Howerton and a second by Mr. Brantley. Is there any public comment with that? Back to the board. Roll call, Ms. Howerton? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. Mr. Durrance? Yes. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. And the chair votes yes. 10B, consider approval of expulsions. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Durrance and a second by Ms. Compton Twist. And we will do roll call. Mr. Durrance? Yes. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. 10C is request to house pre-K programs at the current Kindergarten Learning Center location. Can we have a little discussion before we? <laughs> we sure, sure can. We sure can. I didn't know if Mike was going to present anything. No, no. No, I'll present a few okay. slides. Okay. So, Ms. Wilbur, if you can help me out, and I'll let you maneuver that. <laughs> So at the end of the year last year, uh, the board made the decision for our kindergarten uh, students at the KLC to go back to their zoned schools. And so at that time, there was some discussion about turning that KLC into a pre-K center. So we talked about that a little bit at the end of last year. And uh, right now, Mr. Lethbridge, I'm like you, Jan. <laughs> Um, is putting together a, a team to work together of administrators, Ms. Doty and others, to uh, work on a transition plan on moving the kindergarten students back to their zone schools. And then getting clarification on this and approval on this as far as having our pre-K students, our Sebring pre-K students, in the KLC. Um, in speaking to the teachers out at KLC, there might be some that want to teach PPK next year or one of the other classrooms out there. So for us to begin working on that timeline, we want to start that very early and make sure that there's a clear understanding of every step so the transitions will be just as smooth as possible. So Ms. Walburn, if you would flip to the next slide, I'll give just a little... There you go, there you go. So these will be the um, schools that will be impacted and the units that they'll be losing. So if you think about migrant pre-K, we have a unit at Woodlawn Elementary that will be moving. At, for pre-K ESE, there'll be three classrooms from Cracker Trail, two at Sun and Lake, and one at Memorial. And there, for BPK classrooms, we'll have one at Fred Wild that will be moving one from Woodlawn, one at Sun and Lakes, and two at Memorial. So we'll have a total of 12 classrooms that will be moving from those schools into KLC. I think, Ms. Doty, there's 20 classrooms or 21 classrooms? 21? 21. So that will give us some uh, area to grow, which is very exciting, uh, I think, for the uh, schools that have had BPK on their campuses, what they see for the outcome of that year at their schools for kindergarten students has been amazing. And so if we can continue to work on expanding more and more students having the opportunity to participate in BPK, that will be, that will be very exciting. 
in speaking with Ms. Blackman, I think we also do some testing with our three-year-olds, and that might be a possibility to do that there in one of the classrooms. And then the other thing you had mentioned to me, Ms. Blackman, was the walk-ins for services that might be able to be housed there as well. So if we might not have nine classrooms, we might have a couple of classrooms we want to use for other things, but uh, there'll still be lots of room to be able to grow in that environment. You'll go to the next slide, Ms. Welburn. So on this slide, I wanted to just lay out for you the kindergarten classrooms, them transitioning to the schools, how many they would get for every school. For Cracker Trail Elementary, you'll see there'll be seven classrooms that will transition from KLC to Cracker Trail. Uh, Cracker Trail will lose three pre-K classrooms, and they will need two portables. At Fred Weil, there will be seven classrooms transitioning from KLC to Fred Weil. Fred Weil will lose one VPK classroom, and they will need two portables. Woodlawn will have five, what's that? Nope, I'm going to need to put my cheaters on. Six, six classrooms that will transition to Woodlawn from KLC, and they will lose one VPK and one pre-K myogram and they'll need four portables. They increased two units this school year, and so that was a little different than the information I gave you guys back in June. Uh, so they'll need four portables there. Sun and Lakes will lose one VPK and two pre-K ESE, and Memorial will transition two VPK classes and one pre-K ESE. So that will be our 12 classrooms that will move. And you can see the portable exchange. Now, if you'll go to the next slide, Ms. Welburn, just to give you a bigger picture of, could you go to the next slide? This just gives you an overall, I thought there was conversation or a, back a few meetings ago about how many portables we do have. And so what I've done on this slide is that I've given you the total numbers on each campus and how many are we using for a classroom for a class of students. Now, some of the schools will be using them for support facilitation. Some of them might use it for OTPT. Some of them might use it for resource teachers. And we have some storage portables as well. But for Avon, you can see they have three portables and one they're using for a classroom. Park has 10 portables and they're using two for classrooms. Uh, Avon Park Middle has three. They're not using any for classrooms. Avon Park has High has one. They're not using any for classrooms. HVS has six, and they're using all six of those for classrooms here at the district office. Lake Country Elementary has nine. Two are being used for classrooms. LPE has nine. Seven are used for classrooms. LPM has one, and one is used for a classroom. Lake Placid High has one, and zero are used for classrooms. Sebring High School has five, and three are being used for classrooms. Cracker Trail has five, and four are being used for classrooms. Fred has five, and two are used for classrooms. Santa Lakes has seven, and none are used for classrooms. Woodlawn has 11, and nine will be used for classrooms, and Sebring Middle has four, and four are used for classrooms. That's with the new numbers from the previous slide added into those. That was my next question. <laughs> so that's where we are as far as uh, numbers of portables. Now, in speaking with all the administrators, they have those other portables with things in them. If that could be storage, that could be uh, gifted, that could be migrant. It, there's a lot of things that are in the portable, so I don't think anybody is in a big hurry to give up the portables they have on their campuses. There might be some of them that we will be getting rid of because there's a, a number of our portables that are very, very old. Uh, but that will give you an overview. Uh, to lease a portable is going to be about $9,500 annually. So there will be some cost there. But that just gives you an overall picture of where we are in looking at our portable situation. Uh, I did pull our enrollment, and 
over the past number of years, you know, we've gone through probably five years ago when we started losing um, uh, between 100 and 300 <laughs> students within our district, and much of that was based on family empowerment scholarship. When the vouchers were approved through our legislative um, language, then some of our families took advantage of that with the waivers going to private schools. Uh, this past year, we actually increased our numbers, and we're looking forward to seeing what those will actually be at the end of our FTE week, which will be next week. But uh, our preliminary numbers look like we've increased some. Uh, that might move anywhere from 50 to 100, but somewhere within that gist, I think, is where we'll end up. Uh, but over the course of the last five years, we have not certainly moved uh, with hundreds of kids coming in. Right now, our largest school in elementary is Woodlawn, and they're sitting with about 670 students. So if they have an increase of about 100, they'll increase to about 770, they'll probably lose about 30. So next year, just projecting, I would project them to be about 750. That's our largest elementary school. And then we just move down from that down to, well, KLC now, but that would be different. So probably down to, probably Fred Wild at 465. And so that's our numbers. You know, looking at those initial numbers with our portables, I was like, oh my, we might want to start considering wings, and you still might want to. But our number of actual students in our schools at this point are under 800. So, you know, it might be a little premature, uh, but I'm speaking with Mr. Averett today. I think it will take about a year and a half for us to realistically have a wing built. And so that might be conversation that we want to start having depending on how our numbers do increase. I mean, I do see more and more people moving into this area, more and more homes are being sold, more and more uh, businesses are opening on 27, and so it wouldn't surprise me that we would start getting more people to come to God's country of Highlands County. And I would love to be able to move forward with some of that thinking of at least preliminary discussion, but uh, that's where we are for right now. So. I just wanted to give you guys a little update from June when we first had the conversation about KLC moving into their zone schools and then using this building for a pre-K center uh, and then having starting with the 12 classrooms in it. And then, and Mar Marlene, if you go back a slide. You know, as we see what develops with our VPK programs, uh, it might be something to consider down the road for Sun and Lakes and Memorial students to return back to them. Uh, if we continue to expand and expand and expand with VPK, which we're very hopeful, right, Ms. Connor, <laughs> and principals that we do, uh, that if they start continue to fill this area up, then that might be something that we could have a little more space if that is needed and move those places back. Uh, but for right now, it just made more sense to start with 12, and then we'll move forward from that. So I'll be glad to take any questions or... Yeah, I would kind of asked for the portables because I was at Woodlawn the other morning, and um, that's when Mr. Wright was just kind of sharing with me. He goes, Ms. Howerton, you know, when Dr. Longshore came out, I really thought we were good on our classes, <laughs> but we needed two more allocations. So it looks like we're going to be, we're going to need five portables. Well, my thought was, oh my gosh. And then, so I said, you know, I called Marlene, asked her to get me some counts, which I, I didn't get them until actually the day Dr. Longshore called me. But I'm just gonna tell you, as a board member in 1996, when I started, we were Portable City. And folks, we're, we're, we're getting back there again. And that really, I kinda am a little bit upset as a board member that I've allowed it to get to get where we are right now and I just keep saying I was kind of you know we were talking when we had the workshop I had principals saying they would love to have their kindergarten kids back so of course my thought process still was that we might if we did an admin building it would go to KLC because when in talking to Mr. Cox his 
initial thing was that's the most expensive school you're operating. So we've roughly got 300 kids at KLC right now. 350. So when I asked Dr. Longshore the number of students that we're going to have there, you're actually going to maybe have 200 and hopefully will grow. Again, remind you that these kids have to, the parents have to provide transportation. Of course, I think some principals, I had even, I could tell when it was mentioned we were going to move pre-K, they didn't, they didn't know that was kind of in the mixture. You know, that they were going to be getting kindergarten, but they didn't realize they were going to be losing their VPK. So I just, I as a board member, I'm just struggling that we're still, you know, not looking. I think we're kind of putting the cart ahead of the horse, and we're going to make this stance tonight. We still don't know the total picture, and I think we either need to look at wings or we need to look at building a new elementary school because... Yeah, we've got these classrooms, but I'll, most of the uh, principals here will tell you there's, their classrooms are maxed out with the numbers. So we've, we've got them in classrooms, and then, you know, is finding the teachers, you know. So I'm, I'm just kind of saying I, I can't support this. I can't, besides bringing portables in, there's a cost to setting them up. There's a cost to getting sidewalks to them. There's a cost in leasing them. We had finally gotten ourselves down to where we were kind of out of the leasing business. If you'll look at the number that was given to you a while back, and we, we owned most of our portables, but we'll be going back into leasing there. I just, you know, I was, I mean, Woodlawn had told me, and I don't know, well, Memorial, you're not having to, but Woodlawn had told me they thought they could keep pre-K and kindergarten there, but it's not gonna work out. But I just am struggling with, with taking the action tonight. And I, and I, and I also want to ask, you know, Jan is chair right now, and Isaac, you'll be coming in November. I'm just realizing, and I know we had one workshop on this, but I feel sometimes we're not having the workshops that we used to have years back, and we're, we're getting this information, and we're having to take action on it that night. And I think we need to have a few more workshops on things when we're taking action on things to this latitude. So we are using you know, the right ways that are, like the half cent sales tax. Mr. Shoup has mentioned at a couple of our meetings, folks, Highlands County is growing. People are moving to Highlands County. Are you gonna be ready for this growth? I don't know. That, that we are looking at this. And so I'm just asking that we just kind of maybe look at our overall picture before taking any action tonight. So I don't know anyone else's opinion. I, I, am, I agree with what some of the things that you are saying. Um, I don't like seeing all the portables. I know that we're trying to just um, provide classrooms with what we have, at, you know, what we can do at the moment to try and work, you know, make something happen. Um, I don't want to see a building sit empty either. Um, what would our plan be if we didn't use this building? Well, if we're going to keep the pre-K and the VPKs at the schools, then you're going to be adding, instead of two portables at Cracker, you would add five. Instead of two at Fred, you'd add three. If, instead of four at Woodlawn, you'd add six. And so as you look at those numbers, as far as leaving the building open, that was never... I mean, since we had the workshop in June and talked mm -hmm. about all of these different situations, there had not been any other direction to consider anything else for that building. Uh, I know that initially, and it would have been a wonderful thing to be able to move the administrative offices into the KLC. When we did that meeting, the workshop in June, uh, the current uh, SBHC district office is 43,000 square feet. And at the KLC, it's 40,000 right. square it's feet. Large so that when we went through that workshop in June, it, that really sifted off the table. I would love to be able to be there, but with the situation we had with that, we paused on that. And that's when we had brought this idea forward to use that building for this purpose. The principals have told me that, and you guys are here and some of you can speak to that, uh, that many that have one VPK or two VPKs 
have said I could fill three or four VPKs if I had the space to do that. And so this seemed to be a good opportunity for us to be able to have the room to grow our program, most likely even next year starting the program with more than the 12, but we know we have the 12. But you guys are welcome to come and speak to that if some of the principals would like to bring value to that. But that, that's really the direction I have been since <laughs> June. Uh, is really thinking through that transition and also uh, bringing forward having this solidified so we can move forward with the transition of those students and teachers into their zone schools and keep that moving forward. So I certainly don't want the board to feel like something has been slammed in on them or that it's been a real quick decision. Um, I think we have spent a number of months thinking, talking, exploring, and um, that's the, that's where I am on that. Yeah, we have been talking about this for a while, and looking at some of the portables that aren't being used as classrooms, and I realize they're being used as storage. Go to the next slide. In, in different situations, <clears throat> but, um, you know, maybe like I'm, I'm looking at park, there's 10 portables and only two are being used as classrooms. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what those others are. And because maybe Ms. Doty, because you were there, maybe can you shed light on some of that or? At park. At park? I can give you exactly okay. what they have because uh, Blake had, well, Ms. Ms. Connor actually is oh, here. Oh, okay. Ms. Yeah. Connor, why don't you come on down and you speak better. to us? I'm just wondering if we can't clean up some of those portables that are there. It, please come up and, and um, and they're using them. They're, they're but, currently using them, but you can, he had sent me a little list, but you probably know what they are. <laughs> so Carrie Connor speaking as the former principal at Park. So many of them are used for itinerants like OTPT and things of that nature. There are a, uh, an ESC class out there and a migrant pre-K is out there, mm -hmm. support facilitation. Um, things of that nature. None one of them are actually now, sitting, the, the nurse, nurse so none of them there. are actually sitting empty. There may be one that's storage. Mm -hmm. One is storage, yeah. and two, no, they said, no, are in no, such no. bad shape, they need to be taken down. Correct. Yeah, that storage okay. one's pretty rough, yeah. 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 One of them was taken oh, yeah, down, one was so. Bad, bad mm -hmm. I mean, th those have been there since before Memorial, you know, mm -hmm. so some of them are quite old, mm -hmm. and you would not want a classroom in them, so. So I do think, you know, other than the ones we are needing to eliminate, they're using them for things. I mean, they're using them for either resource teachers or support facilitation or OTPT okay. or migrant. So they're using them uh, in for speech and gifted too. Yeah, it's just okay. not sitting with a classroom of kids in front of them. No, but I, I still feel like they, even with that, Woodlawn with 11 portables, that's a lot of portables. That's a lot of portables. And Ooh. even OTPT, speech. Mm -hmm resource, all the other resources, um, a nurse or a health room, those don't need to be in portables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I look at, like, I'm glad that we have that, now. but those would be better utilized in regular rooms sure. rather mm -hmm. than a portable, especially you when you're doing PT. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine go, having to go up the ramp or down? I mean, that's a lot. But even at Woodlong, as far as 11 rooms, if you had a wing, how many wing, how many classrooms are going to be in a wing if you had room for it? You know, it's just, you'd almost fill that wing with just the portables that, that mm -hmm. are there currently, right. not even um, mm -hmm. thinking not about Not even expansion. adding, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. actually, when we built Memorial, we actually even thought, back on a, when we addressed that, we thought about another, another elementary school. So that's why I'm just saying. We, we might even have to look at another elementary school. So, I mean, I can just say that that's what I'm kind of struggling with because I know the admin has something in mind, but you're going to ask us to eventually, I know it's not on tonight, to come and spend $12 million on an admin building, and I've, I've got portable cities and classrooms maxed out to 25, you know, in some classes, and, you're, and, and explain to the taxpayers that we are um, we're going to build an admin building, but, you know. This is where we are with our schools. And it's not only our elementary folks. So, I mean, I'm just saying, I, I, I kind of feel that we've, I, we're voting on five years. And I, I think we don't ever really look at the, we haven't been looking at the total picture and we used to do that. 
and well, I'm we, struggling. Well, we are within class size in all of our schools. I had to turn that in actually next week, so I know, know that we're meeting class size. To the number though, right, pretty much? Well, it just depends, school mm -hmm. to school, but, but we are meeting class size. Um, I think that we also just need to think about how many students are on each campus. And, you know, what is the point on return of investment on some? So with Woodlawn, they're, the, they're the, going to be the largest school. Uh, they are currently, and I would expect that to happen next year as well for them to be the largest school. So by all means, if we wanted to look at a wing there, I think that would be certainly appropriate to start having that conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't hit the 800 mark yet, but that's not yeah. the specific number. I, I called Mr. Hancock today, and that, w that was a number years back that we mm -hmm. said, you don't want elementary school at 800. And even talked to Mr. Spencer, he said, if I'm going to be close to 800, I'm just going to be honest with you, and I'm going to I'm going to be dealing with discipline, and it's 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 going to be some challenges sure, for sure. for us yeah. to have a school to that latitude of numbers. So, mm -hmm. I that's what I'm saying. I don't know totally what the what action we need to take. But even at 800, you go back to Woodlawn, you're going to need a wing plus 11 portables if you put 800 kids in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's one, and I I agree as far as I, I hate school. leasing portables. I hate you know Woodlawn. You know, you could fill the entire wing with just portables. My question is, what do you do with the 11 portables? Because more than likely, the wing would go where the portables, portables are going to go. I don't, like I said, I don't know the, the, the layout of that now. Yeah. How, how do you get do rid we, of 11 portables? Do we have the for ring a year? Wing to add the portable? Yes. Do we have to add a wing? Is that where we, yeah. you know, I if mean, you there's a space a wing, there. You wouldn't lease the portables. No, I get it. But I'm talking about a year during construction. What do you do with those 11 classrooms yeah. that have to go away for the construction site? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, I kind of, I, so I say, I'm kind of embarrassed as a board member that we're. I, I, I think we need a workshop. I, I think, yeah, we need to look at the long range, the, the five year, the 10 year, the 20 year. I, I, we can we certainly will. do we that. We can do that. Yeah. We can certainly do that. Um, where we are right now is do we want to move forward with these classrooms moving in to KLC? Do you want to schedule a workshop before we move forward with that and pause our work on the, I mean, the transition? What would uh, those pre-Ks coming into KLC? Um, That's what I, I just feel the net gain between the out of portals we got to add for moving elementary schools back to their home schools and the pre-K. That, that's we need to resolve that I think relatively yeah. soon. Can we the get a deeper dive? Might be that, two right? or three okay. years down Certainly. the line. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. You know, I'm still in favor of this, but I'm definitely in favor of doing a Looking workshop and, and doing something that's more permanent versus 10 and 11 and 9. What do we have total? 41. 41. 41. 41. 41. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, absolutely. Taking a look at a workshop as far as wings and that type of thing, I'll be. More and than I agree happy with the, uh, the pre K as far as to get them, you know, a head start before the, the kindergarten. I think the, having them all in one location is a, a great idea. I agree with that too. We, VPK has been a major focus for a long, long time to try to expand that program and get these kids ready. Because like, if you're an administrator and you got a kindergartner coming into your class and they're behind, I mean, it's almost impossible to get them caught up by third grade. I mean, you're just behind the eight ball. So trying to get those kids in place in VPK and offering a public education that we can offer, which I know is going to be a great education. Um, and getting those kids in place, that would be optimal. But we need a deeper dive. Sure. Yeah, I know when I was doing um, the United Way, the Reading Pals program, some of those kindergartens coming in had no clue about letters. And I think if you could get all those students, and, and you won't ever get all of them, but if you can get the majority of them where they at least can cite their ABCs, and I mean, what a huge difference that kindergarten year will, will make. So Absolutely. we can expand yeah. that Absolutely. program, yeah. I think it'd be huge. I've, I've had two VPK it. teachers that pretty much tell me they're in drop right now. And if we do move them, um, they, they, will, they will not be extending their drop. And I'm, I'm just saying, I'm trying to figure out how we're even going to get the teachers because we can't even get the teachers for our classrooms now, you know. So I, I don't know. That's why I say I don't know what the total answer is here. But I have a little bit of a concern as far as the location. Um, I was just concerned more or less for Memorial and for Sun and Lakes because it is a bit of a distance 
um, and the convenience of the parents. So if you wouldn't mind, and because we're not busing them. So. Yes, so Courtney Floyd, principal at Memorial. So we started VPK two years back. Um, we started with one unit and quickly filled that unit and added an additional unit. And our teachers say every day, we were this week actually working through progress monitoring and just speaking of the difference of the students that are in VPK and those that have not attended any program. So definitely VPK has been very beneficial to us. Um, we have had to turn, I don't even know how many students away because we cap at 11. And so we absolutely could have filled another unit. Um, getting the personnel was challenging, but uh, the VPK credentials are not the same as the teacher. So actually, both of the um, teachers that are running our VPK are not certified teachers. They're fantastic, but they have, they have different credentials that they have to have. So that made that challenge um, a little better. As far as um, the traveling, we have talked about that, and I can see that as a concern. When we first opened, there was um, ourselves and then Sun and Lake, and I believe Lake Country, there were the only three VPKs, and people did travel to bring them, and it didn't, they didn't have to be in our zone for that since we were um, one of the only ones that offered it in our location. And since it's free, and now that we've given it free all day, that has, that has helped. A lot of the private centers um, offer it free 8 to 11 instead of all day. Okay. So that has really helped with enrollment, too. Okay. So you don't think that it will hinder it just because it's free? I, I mean, I think for some, that's going to be a problem. But I think for the majority, as, as far as our pre-K ESC, we do provide transportation for them. So it wouldn't affect those students. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and if they are in a private um, VPK program, they have to drive also. So. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, uh, like you said, it's a half a day, but a lot of those do receive free VPK also. So. For the yeah. half a day. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 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 So. I will make the motion. I think it's the best thing at this time. Um, request, uh, or I make the motion to approve 10C. Okay, Mr. Brantley. I will second. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Brantley and a second by Ms. Compton Twist. Is there any other public comment? Nothing? Any more board comment? Um, do you want to go ahead and schedule a workshop as far as this goes? Okay, so yes, we can we kind will. of work it out with a schedule. We'll sure. get Marlene, can you schedule as a workshop on the portables and all that? Okay. I'll reach out to get permission so that we make sure we cover Okay. Okay, we will do roll, roll call for 10C, Mr. Brantley? Yes. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. Ms. Howerton? No. Mr. Durrance? Yes. And the chair votes yes. 10D, consider approval of VPK lead paraprofessional minimum. I took a Sudafed before I got here. <laughs> memo. <laughs> and it's like, ooh, uh, memo of understanding, so I do apologize. <clears throat> Move approval. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Howerton and a second by Mr. Durrance. Is there any public comment with that? Back to the board. We will do roll call. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Mr. Durrance? Yes. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. 12A is Consider approval of agreement between the School Board of Highlands County and Ingrid Welburn, bilingual school psychologist. Move approval. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. Howerton and a second by Mr. Durrance. Is there any public comment? Back to the board. We will do roll call. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Mr. Durrance? Yes. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. And <laughs> I was talking um, today to um, Ms. Blackman, and she said she is secretly or quietly trying to get her full time. And I said, well, I'm not doing it quietly. I, I've, been very, I've, I've been vocal, so we would like to get her back in, into our system. Um, 12B, consider approval of COVID sick leave memo of understanding. Move approval. 
Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ms. Howerton and a second by Ms. Compton Twist. Is there any public comment? Back to the board. Roll call, Ms. Howerton. I just wanted to ask yes. one question. Yes, mm -hmm. certainly. So did, did this get ratified? Does it, do, do they take a vote? How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. That's what I meant to ask when somebody called me about it. Andrew Lethbridge, uh, Deputy <laughs> Superintendent. Um, as far as MOUs, typically we end up uh, meeting with a small group of the union, um, usually the union chief, chief uh, representative, okay. and then the union presidents are involved, um, and we hammer out language. With these being so sensitive and topic lately, I've been very slow to sign them. Um, and many times we go ahead and reach agreement, we sign them, we bring them before you. Um, but I have been, no, we need it to go before the board before they're signed uh, with this. So that's really how the process ends up going. Um, if the MOU is longer than the year, uh, typically, and if it's language that we want to keep, then it goes into the contract and it just becomes enveloped into it. Um, and we end up finding where in the contract does it belong and just insert it, you know, in the proper sequence. Um, if the MOU expires, then typically on that, then it just expires. Uh, sometimes uh, there's things that we want to renew on an annual basis, um, so we might have an MOU that we keep on bringing forward just on an annual basis, so that's an option and that we do at times as well. So the ones you met with said, yes, go ahead. Yes. That's what I need. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Well, it's my understanding that basically the, the change was that there is a, a six spouse Mm -hmm. Before it just said sick child, I think, in this one. Correct. Um, a, we always want to um, make the MOU so it benefits the employees, but uh, we try for it not to be abused either. Um, so this is really specifically language that's saying if, if you were taking care of a spouse that was hospitalized, that um, you would be eligible for the 10 days as well. And we've just had some heartbreaking situations that, and that this has happened. Uh, so we're really looking just to expand it a little bit um, and it, thus far the employees have been very appreciative of the 10 days uh, of that it's not using all of their sick time that they have um, so it's definitely been appreciated uh, for those um, that have benefited from it so. thank you any other board comment you'll do um, roll call Ms. Howerton yes Ms. Compton Twist yes Mr. Durant? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. 15A, consider approval of 2021 district five-year plan. Mr. Abert, did you want to comment on that or? <clears throat> and I don't know, that may be something if we're looking at this to put into our workshop. Well, <clears throat> basically, this is the five-year work plan we do every year, and we have to report to the state any new construction we're considering in the next five years. And since the board hasn't given us any direction, mm -hmm. there is no new construction, but can, we can always amend it. Yeah, you can change it. Okay. It's, and it's financially feasible. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Motion. motion to approve, I guess, if we did that yet. Yes, we are um, consider approval, so. I have a motion by Mr. Durrance. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Durrance and a second by Mr. Brantley. Is there any public comment with that? Back to the board. You did say that um, if we have the workshop, that if there is something that has changed, it can be amended and sent back to the state. Is that correct? That is correct, but uh, typically I do, do not include the half cent sales tax projects in this five year work plan because DOE would have to approve them. And they, right yeah. now we've got too many student stations in their terms that they probably would not approve uh, any, any construction projects. So I, I do not include the half cent sales tax. Okay. Any other board comments? Is that, is that legal, Mr. McClure? <laughs> well, he only has to report the uh, the funding from the state, so that okay. local effort has some sales tax stuff. Yeah. 
I've not done a lot of research on that. That's my first question. <laughs> Me either. But, so, yeah. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? We will do roll call. Mr. Durrance? Yes. Mr. Brantley? Yes. Ms. Howerton? Yes. Ms. Compton Twist? Yes. In the chair votes, yes. There is no emergency items, lead study, there's no one from there. Um, Planning and zoning. Um, school board attorney, Mr. Trefler. I really have nothing special tonight. It's a quiet night for me. That's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, it, it was just very impressive seeing all of our, our kids who are achieving these perfect scores. And, and uh, of course, congratulations to our great staff of principals and our teachers. Thank you. Ms. Compton Twist. Um, the same. I really, really miss the KLC. I love those little babies. They're not babies. I shouldn't say that, but you know, we all call them our babies. Um, they were adorable. I loved watching their reactions to the video. It was really, really cute. It made me tear up a little bit. <laughs> but um, that was some good self-control. So great, great job. Um, thank you to all of the uh, principals who continue to come and give us um, some great uh, information. We always appreciate your knowledge and input. Um, thank you for everyone else who also came and um, helps us out. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, like Mr. McClure said, we want to congratulate all of our perfect scores for the FSA and the EOCs. That is tremendous. It seems like we have so many, so many. So we're, we're growing them, growing them here. So it's wonderful news. Um, thank you. Mr. Dorks? My favorite line of the night. Um, the kindergartners were asked to give your name, your teacher, and your age. I don't know if they caught that or not, but she, um, the student thought that they were asking the teacher's age. She said, she's old. <laughs> so that was my favorite line. Of the night. I don't know if they caught that or not, but I want to make sure they did because it was awesome. So. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> Ms. Howerton, just um, ditto on KLC. Uh, it's always fun to see through children's eyes. We probably, as adults, might have been interesting to see also. <laughs> the bowl of M&Ms in front of you. <laughs> but um, also just always impressed with our students and, and what all they're achieving in their accomplishments. That's the that's, that's good times. Um, thankful that we're going to put a workshop together. Um, also have had someone else even approach with the kind of hearing word out there. So there are some other options into looking at the properties that are available. Like I say, there are things really growing in Highlands County and um, people want to give opportunities to the, to the school board to be, you know, involved in, in what we're doing here in Highlands County. So I had someone else reach out to me. So I don't know how, I know Mr. Um, Averett spoke to the one that I spoke to, and um, I, I think they've got maybe some more information they can provide. I don't know how we want to address that. Okay, and uh, and then like I said, I have somebody else who's even approached me that has something in the downtown area, about 130 acres. So uh, that's why I say there are options out there, and I really would like us to explore everything. So I know we've got the appraisals in. I encourage the board members to go look at that and, um, and, and, and just let's make sure we mm -hmm. do the right thing. <laughs> Mr. Brantley? Um, same thing to see the kiddos out there. It's, like I said, there'd be a lot less M&Ms if the adults were in charge. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, I got a quick little story. Um, my son plays football for Lake Placid High School. He got injured um, last Monday night. So of course, I got to go to uh, the school board urgent care again. <laughs> After my great experience the last time, um, appointment was at 2 o'clock, showed up, glad to see there's not a soul in the place. We're going to fly through there. 30 minutes waiting in the, uh, the lobby. Finally, we get to go in. Get to go in, you sit in the room, not a soul in the place, all three, uh, uh, all the rooms are open. Sit there for another 18 minutes. Finally, the doctor comes in, his knee's swollen, explains to him, you know, someone laid it on him, heard a loud snap, knee's swollen up, he can barely walk. Doctor tells me, he goes, a lot of times it's just bruised, let's give it a couple weeks and see what happens. Oh, and I look at him like I, if I'm on candy camera. I said, you've got to be kidding me. I said, I'm not leaving here without an MRI script. Um, so we got an MRI script, of course. Um, he snapped his ACL. Anyways, a lot of damage. 
if I would have listened to that doctor, that would have been the biggest mistake I ever made. And that's the second time I've had that problem there. Anyways, the reason I'm telling the story is he is the third kid in Lake Placid High School that now has to have knee surgery. Um, and that's after four games. <clears throat> anyway, it's, it's, it's tough when it's your own kid. Um, I, I just, I want to know, like I said, Sebring High School, uh, Avon Park High School, I know when I played, um, Immokalee had knee braces for all the kids, whether they were linemen or what they were doing. Um, these kids are going to have long-term effects. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's um, one at Sebring High, but Joe, well, he did a practice, so Joby Swains. Yeah, he yeah. broke, um, so it, it was a bone, and yeah, he did something. Mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. just, it's just yeah. crazy that in Lake Placid, there's three kids that need surgery now after half the season is over. Um, I just want to look into it. Like I said, do something we can do to try to protect these kids a little bit more. Yeah. Thanks. Um, first of all, Bill, I'm sorry. I, I've been in, in your shoes with my son. Right. Um, fortunately, it didn't happen until college, but... Um, when it did, there was a knee and an elbow, so I, I know what you're going through. Um, but on a happier um, words, um, the KLC, I, I haven't heard that much laughter in this boardroom during a board meeting in a long time, so thank you. And also with the perfect scores, that was great. Um, I think we all enjoyed that. And um, we appreciate our principals, our teachers, and all the, the staff, the team that makes everything possible is not just the principals and it's not just the teachers. They seem to get most of the, the kudos, so to speak. But, um, you know, if you didn't have your, your paras and your, your lunchroom and, and the whole, it takes a team. So, and we appreciate each and every one of those. Um, and then Marlene, will you be getting us some dates for a yes. workshop? Okay. Yes. Um, I believe that before we adjourn, yes, Mr. Lethbridge conducted the meeting the last time, and because Dr. Launcher, you were at you know at your superintendent's meeting, he mentioned on the urgent care we might have a workshop in October. So that's an, I haven't heard a date yeah. for that yet either. Um, that got left off of my announcements now that you mentioned that we were actually going to set that workshop for two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm so yeah. glad you mentioned yeah. that. Bill bring you it up. Give I was me like, a nod out ask there. Me. Yeah. Oh, you did. <laughs> That's a no-no. I didn't read it. Yes, yes, yes. So that will we will start that at four o'clock. Um, Which day? Well, October we 9th. we have a hearing at three three thirty. Oh, I'll get back with you on the workshop okay. day. How about that? Okay. okay. We talk about the possibility of having some other op of some other people applying for that option. Is that what you're? Mm -hmm. We talked about last time a little bit, maybe. Well, their contract, we have a five-year contract. Um, they're in their third year. We can actually renew it, but there are some other options that have, I think, mm -hmm. been approached. Um, and so I would, I mean, I just keep getting more and more. And I had a concern there. And there's, they're, they're not wanting to do some things. That it's actually their contract. So I, I'm not giving in on it. <laughs> so, but, you know, we, there's four others that vote. So. I don't know how out of protocol <laughs> we are by way of in comments. Uh, Andrew Lethbridge, Dep Deputy Superintendent. I've continued to meet with the clinic and uh, honestly at this point just have a uh, monthly meeting set uh, with one of the owners of the uh, clinic, Kelly. Um, as far as uh, prescriptions, as far as uh, update, um, they will be charging us on dispensing. They did um, so uh, we have moved forward and gotten uh, something in place with that. Now, as far as all the prescriptions on the shelf currently, or at least the vast majority, we've already paid for. So when those are dispensed, we're not going to be double charged. Um, but anything new that's ordered as it's put on the shelf, um, then it will only be charged to us. We'll be charged weekly on a weekly, whatever is sent out that weekly. And then we'll be, just be able to review that information and then uh, end up paying that on a weekly basis with that. But uh, we have um, arrived at that, so that will be uh, contractually compliant uh, with that. Um, she was very eager, uh, as I worked with her, to try to improve uh, customer service there. And um, she was very open to the criticism and talking about different areas that uh, ended up happening. Um, they, of course, are facing staffing shortages like everyone else. Um, so it is difficult on that side as far as some of the things that they're facing. 
um, but um, she was very open to and wanting even more hands-on approach to make sure that uh, we have excellent service there. Um, and um, so um, as far as the workshop, thinking ahead to that, um, we have our consultants that would help us go. As of uh, January, a new contract year would start uh, with them uh, specifically. It is uh, built into the contract as far as 60-day uh, notice uh, that we could end up opting out at any time uh, if we wanted to. So that is part of the contract. So even if we start a new year, I will say that going through our RFP um, from talking with the consultants, talking uh, with Tammy, there is no way that we could have a new clinic in place before January 1st. It just, that is not plausible. Um, but um, I do not think that we're locked in on that side. Um, so as far as the workshop, we we're looking ahead um, to even invite the clinic here, uh, be able to address a specific concerns, specific areas that we want improved. Um, I have already talked with the consultants as far as the RFP and getting initial work done on that side, that if that's uh, what we decide to end up moving with, then we'd have specific uh, parameters uh, in that as well. Um, I think as far as cost avoidance, um, it definitely has helped us as far as steerage, specifically that we're able to steer our employees uh, in areas that are more cost effective and better outcomes. Um, but tied with that, there has to be excellent service as well. And if we're not getting excellent service, then um, that's, a, that's a non-starter from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So there definitely needs to be improvement. Uh, I think that we can definitely have those uh, conversations specifically. I think that there was reception to those conversations as far as seeing that there is need <laughs> for improvement there. Um, but uh, it comes down that they really have to uh, show it you know, and that our employees feel it. Uh, this year we have surveyed all the employees overall. Um, the surveys came back uh, uh, fairly positive towards it, and I'll make sure that you guys get that information from the survey. Um, I'll say that the comments were the worst part of it. When you go through the comments, uh, usually if someone's gonna take the time to put it, it probably was not a positive experience. So if you looked at the comments, you're like, oh my goodness, you know, the vast majority were heavy. But if you look at overall the results of the survey, um, overall they were not uh, bad, as, but you guys will be able to review that. So we'll be looking more at the clinic, uh, definitely end up uh, making decisions, um, and we can have multiple workshops. And then as we end up working through it, we can even end up building in timelines as, as improvement to say, okay, we're gonna review this in three months and see, um, have, have you been able to improve in the different areas that you see that you'd be able to improve and if not then uh, we're going to proceed uh, with a bid mm -hmm. another part of the contract was one of our employees was supposed to inventory and i was kind of mm -hmm. here we were and i i, I don't want to change that part of it mm -hmm. and i realize it's going to take a body to do that but that's part of the contract it was part of their contract i'll review that again i don't see that in the contract what i don't know is if that was part of the audit if that was an audit recommendation or something but no, i'll look I back to the contract it. huh yeah. i know i read it because i brought yeah. it to her attention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. yeah it's in the contract yeah. the so we'll audit. review all of that at the workshop but and we'll get that date i'm sorry mr lethbridge missing that we'll, we'll get that information yeah. to you yeah. tomorrow. okay perfect thank you thank you um, at this time, we will call this. You know, with our new NEOLA policies, I'd have to go back and look at that because uh, a lot of times it's just 48 hours for, for many workshop? things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I need to look at that. I'm not saying okay, seven, so I'm not I'm saying 48. We'll get with Mr. McClure okay. And they'll need some time to put things together as well. So. <laughs> this is for the 21st you're talking about? Then? No, sir. This is for Another one. We didn't schedule a workshop to discuss the two things. We have one discussing the wings, and then we have another one with the clinics. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and at this time, we will call this meeting adjourned, and we will head into um, executive session. That's through to Fed. <laughs> Thank you.